we actually provide an alert service out of the box. Uh, there are two different variations to this and uh, let us look at that. So when does this alert service kick in? Um, when you have a process that experiences an uncaught fault, so even you were not expecting a fault there, so you don't have a fault handler there, but your process through a runtime fault and what happens in this case? If you enable the alert service, uh, then we provide two different versions of this alert service. The default one which just sends an email to the user uh, with the information uh, regarding that particular fault. But the other one is the custom alert service wherein we give you a visual interface that you implement and you can basically put in your own logic inside the process and whenever you have an uncaught fault uh, the Informatica Cloud Real-Time Server immediately instantiates that particular process and whatever logic you put in that uh, process will execute. Uh, so before actually going through the uh, demo, there are a couple of configuration items that we need to take uh, care into before uh, the alert service is enabled. So in the admin console, you have two services, alert and email. You configure your email service. You put in the username and the password and all the other details. And then in the alert service section, you have two options. If it's a custom service, then you put in the service that you implemented, the process that you implemented. So this is the custom process that you created whereas if you say send email it will use the information in the email service section to send the email with all the uh, fault details so as part of this demo we are not going to talk into uh, detail about the actual custom alert service uh, development details uh, we're going to just show you how the alert service works. As soon as I say continue here, it will ask me the information where the alert should be sent. I give my address. So as soon as I say continue here, it will instantiate a process that will experience an uncaught fault alert and immediately send an email to the previously provided address. All right, so let's look at the active processes to see the chain of processes that got created. So I have this process. It's called create new account alert service. Uh, I don't think I've enabled logging for this process, so we cannot see the what exactly happened. Uh, let me actually go back and enable logging for this particular process. All right, it just took time. I'm sorry. Uh, I had logging enabled, but yeah. Um, so this process, if I go back to the active processes, is actually suspended faulting. That's because I didn't have a fault handler. I was trying to create an account. Note that this was the same use case that we had in step one. Uh, we were trying to create an account in Salesforce. The credentials were wrong. But there I had a fault handler, it captured the fault and sent back the error message. In this case, I don't have a fault handler. So this is an unexpected fault. So in this case, my process just gets suspended. Let me close the unwanted ones. So if I go into the detail view, I can actually look at the same error that I had in the very first 
error pattern. My credentials are wrong. The, the important thing here is this process, uncaught fault alert, which got triggered. This is my custom alert service. As you can see here, I have a configuration that I'm loading. Uh, the configuration just has uh, the from email address, the to email address, and the email address that was entered from the screen. So as soon as the user enters that information, I'm uh, updating the configuration file with these details. It loads the configuration file and it sends an email with all those details. And the actual email looks like this. I have a fault for tenant 12kn and process create new account alert service the fault details are it's a create data exception and it's an authentication failure so this is an example of a custom alert service uh, a couple of things that you want to keep in mind uh, while uh, if you want the alert service to get instantiated uh, the suspend on fault has to be turned on. If this is not turned on, the alert service is not enabled. Uh, so this is mandatory. And then you would have to go to the admin properties. And then configure the alert service. Configure the email service. Those are the two things that you would want to do. Uh, the email service is mandatory if you're using the default alert service. In my case, even though it was a custom alert service, I was still sending an email. Uh, but the I was dynamically providing the email address to the custom alert service so that it could send the email to that particular recipient. So that was the only difference. But you could have your uh, own logic inside a custom alert service. As I said, you have to implement this interface, the visitor that we provide out of the box, and the server immediately instantiates uh, this process. And you could do anything uh, within this process.